guess I'd been thinking about the, this record really since I was about seven years of age, to be honest. Like, I grew up in a country that's, that was, at the time anyway, quite um, a theocracy, for want of a better word. Um, although at that age, I, I thought that was a good thing. Like, um, I didn't seem to take in anything that was negative as such about Catholicism or whatever, so I was very inspired by it. But um, in particular, I always liked the Old Testament stuff, the prophets and the Psalms and things like that. So when I was really a small kid, I, I kind of was already interested in writing songs. But And I had thought then that I would love to take some of the Psalms and things like that and put them to music. So. Um, so it was always something that was in my mind and some of these songs are songs that I had actually attempted to start writing when I was around 17 or so. There are versions of some of the songs that exist from then, particularly the one uh, from the Song of Solomon. Um, it was a really lousy version of that. Um, but then, yeah, I guess what happened was about, uh, let me see, about three years ago I went to study theology uh, at college in Dublin for a while. And there was a, a teacher there who's a guy who the record is dedicated to, this guy called Father Wilfred Harrington. And he taught the course on the prophets. And he was just so inspiring, this man. He was amazing, really old, old guy. Like, But um, the way that he taught the prophets was kind of like he, he became the God character in, in some way. But he was very soft, compassionate kind of man. And he left out all the aggressive part of the prophets and just brought out the stuff where the God character grieves really over, you know, the the state of his poor people kind of thing, you know. And um, there was just something so inspiring about this man. But then one day um, I was waiting in class and I was reading the Song of Solomon, which I've always loved since I saw that movie, um, Once Upon a Time in America, you know. And um, I was reading it and he, at that point I was sick of the music business and I wasn't interested in it and da da da. And he came up and he banged his finger on the book and he went, you should put that to music, you know. And I was nearly going to box him because I wanted not to do it, the music business. like. But, but he had kind of put his finger on something that the problem isn't so much that you don't want to do music, but that you're not necessarily doing what it is really in your heart to do it, you know. So once he said that, because he was so inspiring to me, I thought, oh yeah, fuck it. So um, that's why I did, I suppose, in the end. So, yeah. So. No, it was it was always that I was really in love with certain texts or, or certain parts of, of texts. Um, so I, I had pretty much a clear idea for years what I would love to do. But I think the thing is that um, at some age maybe you're too young to manage it. You know, you're, because your own um, you haven't worked out enough of your own emotional thing or whatever to, to understand what exactly it is you want to do. Um, so um, I guess I got to the point where I understood more clearly that part of what I wanted to do was you know. Again, having grown up in a theocracy or, or whatever, I understood that, you know, theology, and this is partly why I put the two versions of the record, because, you know, it's it's all about what slammed people put on things. You know, if you look at any of the religions around the world that are causing trouble or whatever, it's down to what slammed people put on the theology, you know. So the only kind of active choice I made was to deliberately pick out the things that, that were loving and compassionate as opposed to the things that were aggressive, like, because a lot of people dismiss for example, the books of the prophets by saying, oh, they're really angry and all of that kind of stuff, but it's actually they don't understand what is really going on in the books kind of thing, you know. So I guess um, what I liked about those books in particular is that the God character refers to itself all the time almost as a... Um, and, and that's how I see it. There's, this is almost like a play, the Old Testament, of characters. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It's still very inspiring or interesting or whatever. But the, the God character compares himself all the time to like a jilted husband, you know, and, and you see it run the gamut of emotions that a jilted husband would run, including anger and then sorrow for having been angry and all kind of, but the, a lot of the time the only thing people portray is the kind of raging angry part, you know, but I, like I say, because of this old priest who would talk about the problems with tears in his eyes almost talking, you know, but the some of the language, you know. Um, that's what that was the only kind of conscious choice I made was to pull out stuff that was gentle or loving or whatever you know but mainly it was stuff that I, I was already in love with as such yeah so. there are a number of reasons for that one again like I say I think that although it was something I was very interested in doing since I was a kid really um, I think you do have to have a certain emotional or spiritual uh, maturity for want of a better word to be able to handle it in a way that you're not going to come across kind of angry or or any you know not bound up with your own kind of personal feelings whether good or bad about religion or your own religious culture or whatever 
Um, and also it's a confidence thing, you know, because it's, it's a, a scary-ish thing to do, to attempt to make a record like this, you know, because there's such a fine line, I was always saying, when we met between corny and cool when it comes to religious music, you know. And so you want to be pretty sure that you can stay on the right side of it, you know. Um, but also, I guess, after Sean Nos Nua, which is the traditional Irish record I made, I guess it, I felt that, you know, creatively I'd reached a certain height that you, you had to then go further, you couldn't go back down to just doing pop records, you know, that there was a certain spirituality in that record, you know, that I guess I didn't want to climb back down off, you know, so... Um, and I had kind of, as I say, come out of the music business at one point because I, I was really fed up with the whole, you know, just bullshit of it, you know, as I'm sure you all know. Like, so I guess I got to a certain age in life where I thought, well, I, I really want to make sure I'm, I'm doing something that feeds me rather than feeds upon me. You know, a lot of the time as an artist, you really feel the business is feeding on you as such. But at least if you, even if it is feeding on me doing this, at least something about it is also nurturing me. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, I, I always felt that was my song, basically, that um, I don't know what age I was when it came out, but very young, and of course it was, I think it was banned here and all kinds of trouble here over Jesus Christ Superstar, because it was this terrible thing. I think that because there was the hint of the suggestion that him and Mary Magdalene were in love, which of course all the little girls loved, you know, because the perfect man, obviously, you know. And um, so, yeah, but I, I, I didn't really like how sickeningly sweet as such the song was or whatever, but also I was jealous because I was sure it was mine, you know, so that, that was just my whole reaction to that song was that's my fucking song, like, one day, definitely, so, yeah. Oh, actually, what am I talking about? No, I met Steve when I was, like, 14 at first. The first job I ever did was uh, wrote and recorded a song for an Irish band called Intua Nua when I was 14 and um, Steve and Vinnie Kilduff were in that band actually, yeah. And then I didn't see Steve again for years and met him at this guy's house out in Wicklow and we were recording a version of Ride On. Um, but I guess uh, I always wanted to work with him because it's very hard to find people who play guitar gently, you know, a lot of the time like a guitar is very much a man's instrument and so it's very hard. they like to beat the shit out of it you know it's the same as trying to find a drummer who doesn't want to hit everything do you know what I mean so I quite like Steve that way because he's just really soft and really gentle kind of way of playing and also you know he's a shaman and all kinds of strange priestly things you know so that was part of why I wanted him involved with this record as well obviously because you know he's not just your average guitar playing Joe you know so. We people who are darker than blue don't let us Well, I guess it, it's interesting to me, I wondered to myself, why have I chosen a song that has nothing to do with scriptures? It's the only song in the record that isn't, has no reference to scriptures at all in it or doesn't on the face of it have anything to do with scriptures. But what I'm interested in, I, I feel, is um, the idea of prophecy. I've always been very interested in the idea of prophecy. And I guess I would see Curtis as being pretty much a modern day prophet, really, in a lot of what he was writing. And, you know, that song is, uh, what, I, uh, what appealed to me about the books of the prophets is the same thing that appeals to me about people like Curtis, that they're singing for their own time, but actually it applies just as equally to our time, you know. If you think about people like him and Muhammad Ali and people like that, what they were talking about actually is, is relevant to us now, you know. The message in a song like People Get Ready is... is yeah, is, is, and is I guess um, as an Irish Catholic woman too, I, I always identified very strongly with the civil rights movement. Um, I can't necessarily tell you why, because it wasn't about freeing oneself from religion, but I suppose it partly was, because to be an Irish person, certainly when I was growing up, um, to be a good person you had to think you were shit. That was the message of Catholicism at the time, do you know? And I guess that's why I identified very much with the civil rights movement, because it was all about self-esteem. And I was also fascinated with how they used music as a way and singing as a way of, you know, expressing, you know, their the whole movement, you know? So, but yeah, and I think with, in Curtis's case, he, he's a prophet. I would see him as a prophet just as much as Isaiah or any of those people, you know, so. Yeah. 